This week, we're going to talk more about Grib and what to do when you're stumped on what your file means. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, my name is John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. So last week we talked a little bit about reading grib files with pygrib and made a basic plot, and we looked at some difficulties reading that same grib file with xarray, which actually the developers have reached out and they're looking at what we can do to make that not be an issue anymore. So hopefully we'll have an updated video soon on how to use that. I wanted to talk this week a little bit more about grib itself. So grib actually stands for gridded binary or general regularly distributed information in binary form, depending on who you ask. And it's been around for quite a while. If you've been looking at weather data since the 80s, you might remember the aeronautical data format, ADF. GRIB is after that, and it is a WMO standard, as you can see here on the screen. So this is a guide to GRIB from the WMO. Now I mentioned that I thought GRIB was a fine format for transmission, especially when we were in a bit constrained world but that it was a little bit more difficult to deal with now. And I wanted to show you an example of that and how I went about trying to figure out what exactly was going on with this grib file. So here in my notebook, I'm importing pygrib and using pygrib.open, just like I showed you last week, to open an ice accumulation file. This is a day one to three file. I am seeking to the beginning of the file, and then we're doing a for loop to go through each grib message I'm printing out the representation of the message, the valid date, the name of what's in the message, and the units of what are in the message. So let's look at the output. The grid message representation shows us it's Lambert, surface, level zero, forecast time zero to six hours, accumulation, uh, but that's all it tells us. From the file name, we can assume this is ice accumulation, and we see a valid date and time there. But if we look at the name, it just says unknown. And if we look at the units, it also just says unknown. So that's not incredibly useful to us. And what that means is that that information is not contained within the grib tables that pygrib is using. This is one of the big disadvantages of grib is there are these tables saying that the number 57 represents ice accumulation. That's what's in this file. So if you don't have the right grib table or somebody is using a grib table of their own that's not a standard, it's not going to know how to interpret that. And there's not really an easy way to fix this, but I need to know what's going on in this file. Is this ice accumulation in inches, millimeters, meters, if we're using SI? I don't know what it's in and I can't interpret the values without it. I can take a guess based on the data that are in the file but we don't want to take guesses. We want to know exactly what's going on. Well, we can eventually find this GRIB2 encoding details for National Weather Service Digital Forecast Database. So the National Digital Forecast Database, that's what NDFD stands for, uses some special GRIB tables that are a little bit different than those from the regular INSEP tables. So you could go through here and eventually find out uh, what you're looking at and maybe some more details on it. But there's an easier way as well. That easier way is the National Weather Service NDFD GRIB2 decoder tool. So you can run this from the command line and there's also a little GUI, a TK GUI that works along with this. You can grab it from the download section over here. This is all at weather.gov slash MDL slash dgrib underscore home. So I downloaded this utility and installed it and this is what we see. So this will actually let you explore the GRIB files that are out there on the FTP server from the Weather Service, and you can download them and do some primitive plots right in the tool. But for now, I just want to figure out what's going on with this file that's on my disk, and that's often going to be the case for you as well. You, you hoarded a bunch of these files that were out during your field campaign, let's say, and now you need to try to figure out how to interpret them. So if we go to the GIS tab, we can then click Browse and go find on our hard drive where these data are. So for me, 
I'm going to go back to my C drive. Then I'm going to go down to users, J Lehman. And I have these on my desktop and I'm at Pi Mondays folder. So there is my file. I'm going to click done. We see the contents of that directory and the path up here in the upper left hand part of the grib tool. I'm going to double click on the file and that populates this table, which shows us all of the individual grib messages. So remember, grib is just a binary sequence of messages, one after the other, and they don't depend on each other. They don't all have to be ice accumulation. We could have different messages for every message in here at different times that may or may not be related to each other, but that's not the case here. So we can see that now it has a short name of ice accumulation and a long name of ice accumulation kilogram per meter squared. So that tells me exactly what I need to know about this file. This is indeed an ice accumulation file and the units are kilogram per square meter. So if I wanted to convert that to inches or millimeters, I need to assume an ice density and then we can just do a uh, simple dimensional analysis to get that to the appropriate length scale that you want. You can see the level, the reference date, the valid date. This would be called the analysis date in PyGrib and so on. This tool also lets you export. So you can click down here and export shape files or NetCDF or even a CSV of these data. So you could choose your NetCDF version up to version three and generate a NetCDF file from the grib. As I mentioned, this is something that you can also do from the command line. So you could use this utility to pre-process grib files. Though I think what I would recommend doing here is using the knowledge that you've gained from exploring the grib file like this, and then parsing that grib file correctly in your code, and then writing it out to some format like a NetCDF or HDF5, or making it into an X array data array that you can use for your analysis and storage on disk later, so that it's stored with the data with sensible units and so on, and nobody else will have to go through and replicate the digging that you've done to figure out what's in these files. Now I'm picking on ice accumulation from the weather service because that is a, a file that I was able to find that didn't conform to any of the NCEP grib tables that are used by PyGrib. But of course, there are many files out there generated from models or generated by individuals or even that are misgenerated that you might need to dig into using tools like this. So I wanted to make you aware of this NDFD GRIB2 decoder program that you can get for free from the Weather Service website and show you about how to dig a little bit more deeply into GRIB files. Next week, we'll continue our exploration of dealing with GRIB as a data format, and we'll continue with projections and how we're going to get some of that information plotted on a map correctly every time. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.